Hey, I'm Joan Marcet and this is Match Day. Today we had the awesome opportunity to talk with Maria Ticas. She's a journalist for Diario Sport in Barcelona and she's like the most prominent journalist in Barcelona following women's football. It was a blast to talk to her. Uh, we took some time away from her to, to watch the UEFA Women's Champions League, so we really appreciate her taking the time. It was an awesome opportunity. She's interviewed the biggest players in one of the biggest teams uh, in Europe. Uh, she explains a bit about her journey on how she became uh, the most prominent, the most uh, successful women's football journalist in Barcelona. And a bit about the World Cup. We talk a bit about when Alexia Putellas can be back, how the path of the Champions League title looks for FC Barcelona. And overall, just a blast to have her. So enjoy this conversation that we were super, super fortunate to have her. Ah, by the way, she also mentions to which player she would give a limited card, to which player she would give a rare card, and to which player she would give a legendary match day card. So stay tuned, stay until the end, and you'll find out. Thank you so much for joining and enjoy this. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Really excited to, to have you here. How was uh, yesterday uh, the experience of being back at the, at the camp now for uh, another Champions League game? Yeah, it was amazing. I didn't imagine it would be like this um, incredible experience again, but it had been a long time, so it, it was great again. Um, and the result was really, really good. That's awesome. It's also like one year ago that uh, it was like a full stadium, like plus 90,000 uh, um, spectators there at the stadium. How did it feel that day for you as well, being there? Um, last year, it was one of the most, if not the most, um, the best experience since um, I'm working as a journalist because I really felt part of it. Um, it was, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't... Um, I, I expected that there would be so many people, but I, until I saw all the um, all the stadium uh, full of people, uh, I realized it was something really big and and for the history. Well, how do you think that that day like changed a bit the the like the way also that that. Um that uh, women's football is, is perceived in the city, right? The, the connection with the team and, and, and Barcelona and, and the city itself on that day was like, a, it felt like a, like a turning page, like, like a milestone. Uh, yeah, I think it was like the beginning, beginning of something really big um, to start opening the stadiums because maybe uh, Lyon is the, the team that has won the most... Um, most titles um, but I think that Barca is a team that has made history in terms of social impact um, and being able that little girls can dream about playing football I think that Barcelona is like the I don't know how to say it but the pioneer of this so it was really emotional um, the, begin the beginning of something um, really really big because then it came like this summer with national teams, Sweden, also in, in the Euros, in Wembley, um, this year at Champions League, all the teams are opening the big stadiums for the women's team. Um, and it was, it's been amazing, I think. That's, that's unbelievable. It, it was about time, right? Like it was, just, it feels like once the, the, like football gave the chance to 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 women. They they took it by storm, and 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 it's awesome to see. Um, before you mentioned that was like your best day at work, like last year at, at the stadium. And we have like our first question from from the community it comes from Sara, and she asks like, <laughs> which player has made you more excited uh, to interview on on your days as a journalist? Um, Alexia was my first interview in before winning the champions in March of 2021. And mm -hmm. so it was really special for me, but it was during uh, coronavirus, it was online. I, it wasn't um, on, the, on the Ciudad Esportiva. So mm -hmm. it's, it was a little bit weird, but I enjoyed it. Um, I think my best interview, it was against Bruna or Engen. Um, okay. And the one that 
I really, really wanted to do and, and it was like super exciting was with Kira Walsh because I have a special connection to, to her since I I told she would be a Barca player. So I really enjoyed this interview. Awesome. It's so great to have the opportunity to to interview all yeah. these all these players. But like what really stood out to me is that your first interview with, with was with Alexia already, which feels like they they just made you star with like the highest yeah, it's uh... like interviewing Messi for the first time. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. When I think about it like it's it's like that and it's really it's really amazing. That's that's so great. It it's also um we are super lucky at match day because uh, like uh, we are a game studio right so we are we are building games yeah. and uh we are super privileged to have alexia putellas as one of our ambassadors um she she also joined us last february to talk a bit about how we can develop games and what she would like to see from a, an elite women uh, football player um and I, I i have to ask you this question when do you think that she will be back sorry i didn't hear that Sorry, uh, when do you think that Alexia is gonna is gonna come back? Oh, I don't know. I think we have to be patient because um, this kind of injury takes a long time to 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 recover. Um, when when she broke uh, her ACL, uh, we told that it would be around ten and, and twelve months. I am also Jana Brunacata. All of them um, have been out for at least one year. So I think that we shouldn't be um, expecting Alexia to come really, really soon. But I think maybe at the end of the season or or in summer, I think. Uh, you, you think that uh, then that is probably too early the the semifinals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of because the when she, when in this kind of injury, when they start doing um, some part of the of the trainings with with the whole group, um, it took at least five, six, uh, seven weeks to to come back, and I think that it, we have to be patient because it's more important that she recovers. Uh, full like to be one hundred percent um confident uh because if not she can get injured again so I think we have to be really patient with with his her comeback. It's it's difficult because uh, we are so looking forward to see her back on the on the field and uh, you were mentioning summer as a as a possible timeline. Uh, obviously, this year is, is the World Cup, uh, Women's World Cup in, in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we have some, some really cool initiatives from, from Match Day Prepared, but I wanted to ask you a little bit um, if you're going to be covering or if you're going to uh, get some very well-deserved uh, um, holidays. <laughs> uh, and which teams do you think that, that will be the favorites for you? Which like three, four teams do you think that have the higher chances of winning on this summer? I still don't know if I'm going to be there in Australia and New Zealand. Um, it's complicated, but it's not like it's still a possibility. But I won't be on holidays because even if I go there or I, I stay here, I will be covering the, the World Cup. Um, of course. But I will do my, my holidays before or after. I still don't know. <laughs> um, and I think that favorite teams are um maybe like us is is always favorite but i i think that this year maybe um england or sweden maybe um they are or germany of course i i forgot um i think that these three mm -hmm. are the most like the teams with most talent and players that can really be making differences in the world cup um I don't know if you follow much uh, like the, the American League uh, of uh, football, uh, like the, the NWSL. Um, this week we have announced a partnership with the Washington Spirit. Uh, that's our first partnership. It's obviously uh, with the women's football team. We're really, really proud about it. Um, what do you think that what do you think that has been the advantage for the for the US in the last for the USA in the last uh, editions where they have been dominating uh, so much? 
uh, I, I don't have time to follow to follow the, the link there because <laughs> I, can't yeah, I, I would be crazy because like I really don't have time I, I, I have time to watch the, the Spanish league also the leagues in Europe the most important leagues in Europe and of course the Champions League um, but US have always been um, into into women's football the they have always put like a lot of money to women's team and teams and I think that um women's national team has always been more important than men's national team in terms of winning titles and, and their presence around the world. Um so I think that the key is like really believing in the girls team um and putting and putting some money and, and having good conditions. But I think that this year is not maybe the favorite because I think that they are like in transition um, with some experienced players and now like with really young players. Um, and I think that other teams are like better than than them. Uh, let's see. It's um, it, it's going to be really excited. I, I'm, I, it's always great. I think the last uh, Women's World Cup was already a, a fantastic event. Yeah. It's always great to, to, to because it grows so, so much the... The sport. Um, also, as a, as a super prominent already, like you have had like a, a star, a, a meteoric start onto onto uh, journalism <laughs> uh, in Spain. How has it been for you, like also as a young woman covering a, a, a growing sport in a in a, a Spain? Unfortunately, still a very male dominated uh, sector. Um, how has it been for you finding your space, finding your voice, uh, and 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 just becoming like so successful in 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 covering in covering uh, FC Barcelona? Oh, it's a difficult question. Um, <laughs> I, when I started like working at, at the Area Sport, I was a fan of of Barcelona's women's team since like I don't know, I don't know how many years ago, but I I felt like I was I had a responsibility to to give that um visibility that that women's football needs to have and and I really like to sp- to explain and to get people know what was happening and what is happening with with the women's team in Barcelona and get to know their players and 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 how they play and and all this kind of stuff so I really felt like I had a lot to say about them and and a lot of people ask me, but don't you prefer to to be covering the men's team? And I always said that I prefer covering the women's team because um they do not have that visibility that they deserve maybe. So so and I think that I've grown like in last two years like maybe like the Barcelona team has grown also. So I think that when they started winning. Um, when when they won the Champions League, most of the media started like um, believing in in journalists that cover uh, women's uh, teams, so and women's football. So all of us also have had a lot of opportunities also in in journalism. So it's been like a journey that it's been increasing um, with increasing opportunities, and now I really have time to to talk about it because it I used to do it like when it was um I have I had uh I was like a community manager in sport and in like my free time or when I didn't have time I also I always um find some time to to talk about women's football but it was not like my main job and now it is so Mm -hmm. I think that it's like I'm really fortunate to do it yeah, fortunate and also like you as you mentioned, you have interviewed like the biggest players. You yeah, have totally. awesome pieces, so it's super well deserved. It's uh, very, very for a uh, very privileged, but also like super, super well earned. Um, talking about Barca a little bit, uh, they just uh, well, they they just cruised uh, against Roma yesterday, five uh, one at home, as you would expect at the Camp Nou. Who do you think is the the biggest challenge for them aside from Lyon, who, who doesn't look like to uh, particularly strong this year on, on the champion. But I think that Lyon is always strong. Like maybe they are not as good as they used to be, but it happened the same the last two years or three years. 
Um, and they are always there. Like they are always favorite because of their experience, their strength. I think that it's always a a difficult rival. Um, at the beginning of the season, I said that Wolfsburg that it's now playing against PSG. I, like I'm watching the the game like in, in silence. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that you took the time now with this like awesome, no, awesome I, I game. My TV on and with the game there, but but no, I, I've, I've muted the TV. But I think <laughs> I you. thought that Wolfsburg was the maybe the favorite, um, the best candidate for the for the trophy. But I think that now. Maybe um, Barca is the strongest to to win, but of course Lyon is always a difficult rival. Um, of course, I don't know what will happen with this game that it's now being um, played, but I think that also Wolfsburg is a candidate. I think that um, it, there's no team that is doing perfect this year, like that everything is so easy for them. Um, so I think that it's really equaled. Mm, we saw it in the in the first leg um, of the quarterfinals. All of the games was 1-0, 0-1. It, it was amazing. And I think it's really good for the competition that this kind of um, show um, that really hooked the, the fans. It's, it's amazing, I think. Did you saw the, the Arsenal goal yesterday? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, that back <laughs> from... Uh... Frida. Leah, that, that was uh, unbelievable to watch. It's so great. Also, I think it's really good for the competition that um, that there's not a clear favorite, right? This year, I think it's also great for the for the show. Yeah, I think it. Last years, it was everything about Lyon and maybe Wolfsburg was there also, but then when Barca won the Champions, it was um, like they broke with this. Um, with this uh, monopoly, maybe. So so nowadays, like Bayern was like said goodbye to the, to to Europe yesterday, and and Bayern was a, yep. a a candidate to win the trophy. So everything can happen, and I think that that's really beautiful and 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 entertaining, maybe. It definitely is. Also, well, Bayern is having an awesome season here in in Germany. They just beat Wolfsburg yeah. uh, on the weekend, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, I, I was I was surprised because also Arsenal dominated the game from like top to bottom. I have to ask you now a uh, question. As you know, we, we are building games here at Match Day, football games. Uh, we have our very uh, we really believe and strongly believe yeah. um, on 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 equality, right? So we are building. Uh, we are soon. Uh, um, don't have dates yet, uh, but we are planning to to start launching a women's cards. And I wanted to ask you, Maria, if you are a, a gamer, like either a video gamer or a mobile, uh, or you play some mobile games, uh, um, when you have a bit of time from covering all this all this great action from Um Not really now, because as you said, <laughs> I don't have time. But <laughs> when I was like younger, I I used to. Um, I have I've always played FIFA um, on the PlayStation and 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 also some football games on I don't know the names but on my computer when I was like a teenager um, and I've always liked it but now I I don't have time to to play games I would like it. We will once we have launch our cars and we have launch our first games. Uh, we will we will call uh, the Ari Sport okay. so that they give you yeah. like ten, 10 minutes a day of to, to to you play. You can tell me and I will play. Of of course. Um. So the what we do have right now as uh, is um we have our first game right and we have uh player cards um um that you can have on different rarities right. So you can have like common cards that are cards yeah. that are. Um, that 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 are uh, unlimited, but then we have some specific rarities. So we have a uh, limited rarity that is like the second least, uh, the second more common. Then we have the rare cards that are the second most valuable, and then the legendary cards. What I would I would propose a game to you, and is that if you could essentially give me your top three of players uh, right now, assigning these rarities. So. Who would be your your limited player or top three in the world? Your rare player with top two in the world, and your uh, legendary player with top one in the world using this uh, match day 
uh, rarities for to, to pick your your top three right now. It doesn't have to be like the best player. It can also be your favorite um, players for, it's for about this season of, or the whole. You can do it all time, definitely. Oof, it's complicated. <laughs> or this season, whatever is best. Yeah, player. this. Oof, it's complicated. Um. Well, I don't know. Eh? Maybe. <laughs> I think my favorite player this year is being Fridolina Rolfo because like it would it would be my top one because I think she's doing a really really good season. Um she's been at a great level like regularly like maybe all games or almost all games so I think that she would be my top one. Um I don't know how if I, I don't know. <laughs> so, legendary card would go to Fridolina. Um, talking about this season. Mm, second one. What was called the second card? The rare, uh, rare card. Rare card to maybe Mappy Leon. I think also. Oh wow! He's, she's doing great. She scored an awesome goal. It, it was uh, it was a banger. And it, awesome. it was not the first, I think, like this season. She has scored like three really good goals or four, I don't know. And last year against Madrid, it was another amazing goal. Um, <laughs> and also, I don't know. I really like Lena Overdorf in World Work. I, this, I, I think that maybe last season she was even better than, than this one. And also in the Euros, she was really, really good. Um, but, and I really like this player. To say a player from another team, I would say Lena, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's it's great. I was about to ask you if you would choose like players from different, uh, yeah, from different teams, say. which would there be? But yeah. but uh, I love it. No, Lena is also like a huge huge deal here in Germany. I uh, I was following the Euros, as yeah. you know, Germany reached the final, then uh, pop. Uh, couldn't play the final, so Germans are still a bit a bit sour about that. Yeah. Uh, Maybe but... she was the second best player in the world last season. So Lena. Yeah. Definitely. She she's top class. She's definitely top class. You know what? Match day we also like uh like a bit of uh, to to spice things up and we have uh, Sean, uh, one of my colleagues here that sent himself one of one question, a pretty dangerous question Ooh. actually, is uh, if you could sign one player from from uh, Real Madrid uh, to the FC Barcelona team, which one would it be? Mm-hmm. That's a tough one. Don't like, to, like things, spice things up. <laughs> I would say I like some players from Real Madrid. I, I really do, but I don't think that any players. <laughs> Maybe it's a little hard that I say this, but I don't think that any. Real Madrid players would be starting the starting eleven in, in Barcelona. But I really like Maite Horos, Terea Vieira, mm-hmm. and of course Caroline Weir. I think that she's a really good player. Maybe her I would sign her. What about this new like teenage sensation uh, that they just signed? Linda Caicedo. Yes. Um, I think she's a really, really good player, and I think it's a really good signing from Real Madrid. Um, she, if everything goes well, I think that she will be a top player um, in a few years. But I think that she's still really young, and uh, they are putting a lot of pressure on her. And maybe she needs some time to to adapt to European football and and to compete to big clubs and big teams. But I think that she will be a, a star um, in the next years. Yeah, let's. Uh, it looks like that. It looks like that. They've seen some some videos. It looks really awesome. But what, as you said, like with teenagers putting a lot of pressure, can be uh, can be a bit dangerous. Talking about young players, uh, what do you think about uh, Salma Parajuelo? And uh, the, I always struggle pronouncing the surname. <laughs> I'm sorry. I prefer uh, Salma. <laughs> Salma, right? It makes it way easier. Yeah. Uh, she, she's she's like making her some 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 space on the starting eleven right now. I didn't think that she would adapt so and fit the team like so quick. Um, it surprised me. 
because I've I've seen her with like she came from an injury last year uh, to Villarreal. Um, and then also this summer she played for the for the World Cup. Um, it was like she was also injured. She, she injured. She she was not like one hundred percent fit. Um, and she when she first played with Barcelona, like it took some months. So so I didn't expect that she would fit like so quickly. And I'm re- I really like like how she's playing. I think that she's a special player. Also she has some some way to improve. But but I think that if she um follows uh the Jonathan Giraldez um suggestions and, and how like she can be even more like she really knows that she can do better, but I really like what mm-hmm. she has shown um in Barcelona and she has a lot of personality, so I really like her. It's one of these players that you just see her walking and you think like wow, that's like a, a footballer, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's she has all or the an athlete all the... because she, yes. she, she has a lot of like the physic physical aspect, like she's from and like, definitely. Yeah. Also, now you mentioned Jonah, uh, like I know uh, Twitter Barca fam is uh, crazy uh, mm-hmm. about him. Uh, you know, it's always, uh, I always receive so much love and also he has a very special personality, right? Has you, have you had the chance to, to interview him and, uh, or, or, or you ask him a lot of questions on, on the press conference? Yeah, I, not, I uh, haven't interviewed him because I, well, I'm always talking in, in press conference like, when it comes to this time of the year that with a lot of um, games, important games, we, Wolfsburg almost scored. <laughs> um, Ooh. Yeah, no, no, it, it didn't um, get in. Um, so I was saying, um, when it comes to this time of the year, um, we have a lot of press conference, like pre-game, um, post-game, and we have the opportunity to talk to him a lot, and um, I really have to say that it's a pleasure that he always talks. About, he he talks about football, and also always if you ask him any question, um, he has an answer. And also, I really appreciate that he talks in Catalan because he's from Galicia. So mm-hmm. so I think that I I always ask him in Catalan um, because I really like that she's. I he is um, talking in Catalan when he's not Catalan at all, so um, it says a lot about him also. Definitely, you know, I, do you know how much Barça fans love yeah. that? Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's a great plus. Definitely, we we should think about maybe uh, holding one match day session in in Catalan, Maria. If you want to repeat the next one, okay. we can also <laughs> uh, we can also check it out. Um, just to just to to close this, um, uh, we will definitely record this. Uh, you will find this in a podcast form as well uh, on on the match day uh, social media channels. You can follow us here. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, Maria, it's been such a pleasure, such an honor to have you here. Uh, we haven't talked uh, in a while. We, we we met each other when we were uh, working at, at FC Barcelona, yeah. and I'm so so grateful uh, and so happy for for the awesome career that you're having you. and, and so so happy and grateful for you joining today it's uh, definitely it's uh, it's it's great and uh, yeah I, I think that you will you are in for a, a treat this season with FC Barcelona following them it's going to be great and thanks so much thank you it, it's been a pleasure <laughs> Thanks to everyone that uh, shared questions, um, and yeah, we will uh, we will do one of these uh, weekly or uh, bi-weekly at worst. So um, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you around. Ciao, Bye. ciao.